Yo, hello, my name is Westbam and welcome to another 10 minute loop. In today's Cinema 4D tutorial, I want to show you how I made this sphere with some orange things popping out. Well, we're going to make a sphere, do some basic modeling and then to move the orange parts, we are going to use the displacer with a protection tag. So let's jump into Cinema 4D and let's get started. I'm going to start by making a sphere and go to the display and do gross shading lines because I want to see my lines. And next I'm going to change my type to hexahedron and now we got all these squares in here. Now we can make our sphere editable. I'm going to go to polygon mode, press ctrl A to select all my polygons. Now I'm going to hit D for extrude and I'm going to change my variance to 100%. I'm going to untick preserve groups and if I extrude now, left click, drag to the right. We got this extrusion but they're all extruded differently. Next I'm going to press E for inner extrude and I give it a little inner extrude. I'm going to press D again and this time I'm going to set my variance to zero and we're going to push these polygons inwards. Next I'm going to press E again for inner extrude, do a little inner extrude, press D again for extrude and now I want to push my polygons outwards. Not too much, maybe something like this. Now with these polygons selected, I'm going to go to select, set selection and I made a polygon selection. I'm going to give this one a name and this is the selection tag I'm going to use for my displacer. Next I'm going to click on select again and I do a grow selection and if you look in here now, you might see we also got this edge selected. I'm going to do that again, so select grow selection and we got all the insights as well. Now before I make another selection tag, I'm going to click somewhere. So my selection tag is not selected anymore. I'm going to click on my sphere, go to select, set selection. And now we have two selection tags. The last one, well, I'm going to name it texture. Because I want to use this for my texture. And we are ready to make a displacer. Make it a child of the sphere. Go to the shading tab. Change the shader to color. The default color is white and that's perfect, but as you can see now, my entire sphere is displaced. And I only want to displace that one little polygon we selected. Now in order to fix that, I'm going to right click on my displacer, go to Cinema 4D Tags and make a restriction tag. And if I now drag my displacer selection into one of these fields, and now my displacer will only displace my spheres at the polygons that are under my polygon selection tag. Now this might look a bit weird, but let's make a subdivision surface and drag the sphere in there. And now everything is subdivided and it looks way better. Now if we click on the displacer and go to the object tag, we can play with the height. And this is going to be our animation. Now before I start the animation, I'm first going to double click on my material field to make a material. And I'm going to keep everything basic, I'm just going to change the color to red. Do it again. And this one I'm going to make a luminance material. Maybe a dark orange. And we can drag our materials onto our sphere. Now as you see my whole sphere turned orange. So we made a selection tag, so drag that in the selection of our material. And now only the holes are orange. Ok, let's jump into our render settings. Change your render settings before you set up an animation. And this way you can be sure that what you see in your camera is what you see in the renderer. I'm going to change my renderer to physical and I'm going to add one effect. And that effect is ambient occlusion. The maximum ray length by default is set to 100 centimeters, but my entire sphere was 100 centimeters. So I'm going to lower this, make it 10. And this will give us some ambient occlusion, but the lower ray length will reduce the noise. Now while I'm here I also go to save, give it a name. I'm going to call it this sphere, because it's a displaced sphere. And I'm going to make my animation 240 frames, or 8 seconds. Set the frame range to all frames, except the first one. And now it's time to set up our animation. I want to make it on beat number 2 and beat number 4. And beat number 2 starts at frame 15, so let's jump there. Go to your displacer and we can change the height, until we see something that looks cool. Maybe this, 18 centimeters, make a keyframe and I'm going to jump back 3 frames, 1, 2, 3, frame 12 and I'm going to change the height back, maybe to 3 centimeters 
make another keyframe. So it grows in three frames and now we're gonna make it shrink, maybe in five frames, so frame number 20, also three centimeters, and make a keyframe. Now, in order to loop these frames, I'm gonna go to Layout Animation. And here you see the keyframes for our displacer. Now, I wanna loop this little bump every second. So, in order to do that, I'm gonna go to frame zero, and I wanna copy this keyframe. So, I hold down the Control key, track to the left, and I made a copy. Next, I'm gonna go to frame 30, and I'm gonna copy the last keyframe. So, select it, hit Control, drag to the right, and we got a one second loop now. Now, in order to make this loop, I'm going to click on my displacer, and over here, you see after and before. And if I set after to repeat, and give it a lot more repetitions, this little animation will be repeated, and it will fill our timeline. Okay, we can go back to our startup layout, and we can make a little camera animation. First, I'm going to make a circle, put it at XZ. I can make the radius a bit bigger. Next, I need a camera. And I want to put my camera on this circle. Now to do that, I'm going to right click on my camera, Cinema for Detects, Align to Spline. And I'm going to drag my circle into the spline pad of this tag. If I play with the position, my camera is following the circle. Next, I want to be sure that my camera is looking at my sphere. So I'm going to right click, Cinema for Detects, and I'm going to make a target tag. The target of my camera is going to be my sphere. And now my camera will be looking at my sphere at all times. So we can keyframe our align to spline tag. I'm going to set the position at zero. Jump to the beginning of my animation. Make a keyframe for position. Jump to the end. Set the position all the way up to 100%. Make another keyframe. Left click your first one. Make it linear. Left click your last one. Make it linear as well. And if we now look through our camera and play back the animation, we can see our animation. Now let's make it a little bit more dynamic. I'm gonna rotate my sphere. So I'm gonna jump to the beginning of my animation, go to my sphere, coordinates, make a keyframe for the B, jump to the end, set this at 360 degrees, make another keyframe. Maybe we can go to our circle, offset it a little bit. And as a final touch, I'm going to make a Jiggle Deformer. Make it a child of your sphere as well, but place it after the displacer. And if we press play now, the Jiggle Deformer will give some extra motion after every bang. Now, the Jiggle Deformer will jiggle a bit after our last keyframe. So be careful not to place your keyframes too close, or you might lose your loop. But yeah, this is basically our main animation for now. The trick I wanted to show you is how to use a displacer and a restriction tag. Uh, I think the result is pretty cool, so I'm gonna render it all out. Once again, thank you all for watching. My name is Westbam, and I see you all next time.